Two million. Four hundred thirty-four thousand. Three hundred eleven people in this city. And only one me. I'll take those odds. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Be unstoppable. The all-new 2015 Ford Edge. And good afternoon, everyone, from the lobby of Bruner Motors on the corner of the South Loop and Lillian Street in Stephenville. Make sure you stop by. We'll be here for another 30 minutes. We've got free lunch courtesy of the pizza place, refreshments, and uh, we're actually doing a Toys for Kids, Optimus Club Toys for Kids event today. So instead of giving away prizes, we're asking folks to bring new unwrapped toys, part of that Optimus uh, Club Toys for Kids campaign. And so we thank everyone for being here. This is a special edition of the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show. It's brought to you by the Bruner Auto family. So we thank them for their support in making the show possible. Coach, I don't know we've ever done a radio show in December, have we? Well, I guess this is a, this is a preseason, the pre-kickoff to the conference season. And, and it's nice to come out here just before Christmas. And uh, we really appreciate Greg and Dwayne and what they do for Tarleton Athletics at Bruner Motors. Coach, I'll start and ask you a question. I asked uh, Coach Chris the other day, at the time you were 7-1, and one, and I said, well, Chris, you got to be pretty pleased with this 7-1 uh, and one start to the season. He said, no, I'm not, actually, because we lost the game. So I'll ask you, you're 8-1. and one, Are you pleased with the start? Well, you know, it's it's we, we always want we always want to win all of our games. There's no doubt about it. And I figured, you know, it's always disappointing when you lose a game that you felt like you should win, Casey. And and uh, that was the case when we played Pueblo here. But to be eight and one, and we were trying to uh, work in some new chemistry, and and it's a new season. And we've had a very difficult schedule this year. Sure. It's, it's been a very difficult schedule. We have uh, we talked about it the other day. Our schedules has been much harder this year. You can blame Troy Jones for that. But uh, it's uh, it's been a very difficult schedule, and uh, and it's going to get even tougher as the week goes on. Yeah, you played nine games thus far, Tarleton State with an eight one record. Now the number eight ranked team in the nation, and we don't have time to talk about all nine games. But I got the box scores, and let's just quickly talk about the games that have been on the schedule. Coach, it started with an exhibition game against the University of Texas, November sixth. I know you aren't pleased anytime you lose, much less by thirty four points. But you look back at that game and what Texas just did this past weekend. It was beat North Carolina, but you know we didn't play very well that night. And again, you know we were we, we, again we got a new team, and we're just. Uh, didn't make shots. I think we were overhyped for the game. I think yeah. we were trying too hard for the game. And, you know, I looked at the tape that time, and I think with about six minutes to go in the game, it was about a 10 or 11 point game. It was 29-18, in fact. That's what it was. And and if you could just keep it right at that that margin, and then, you, you know, you can work your way back into it. And uh, they kind of had a they, – they really had a, a surge right there. They got up by 20 at halftime. Then we come back to the second half, and I think we played them to a 13 or 12 point second half, and, and they played a lot better second half than we did the first half. And, and so it's a you know it's it's a situation where you're up, you're down there and it's a different atmosphere and a different environment. But I thought you know I, I was really proud of our fans. I think we had over yes. somebody said we had over a thousand people there. It was a big big biggest exhibition game crowd that they had ever had in Texas, and it just shows the the following that we have. And, and it's something that's special for us. We want to play on a national stage. We did. We were on Dish Television and Direct TV all across the nation. And, and it's just one more time for to give our program the exposure. So you open the season of the Texan Tip-Off Classic on November 13th uh, against Colorado, Colorado Springs. Coach, you won that game by nine. I know a program you have a lot of respect for. Uh, yeah, another program that was in the NCAA tournament last year, and I knew that was going to be a tough weekend. And I thought our kids came out and played very well that night it's for an opening game. And uh, Colorado Springs has got a very good basketball program, and, uh, and it was a great win to start the season with. The next night, you play Adams State, another Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference opponent. You win that game 84 uh, to 72, and Charles Hill coach really had a nice game, 24 points and nine boards. Yeah, another team. They're very athletic. They really shoot the ball. They came out playing very well, and we had really have to really actually come back in the first half and take the lead and, and get control of the game in the second half. And so you start 2-0, and then Delta State comes in, coach, out of the Gold South Conference, and that game, I know you were very concerned about. They've got a heck of a basketball team, and you're able to win that one by nine. Yeah, they're eight and two right now, Casey. They're having a great year. I didn't know that. One of the better teams that we played this year. They have a great ball club, and I look for them to be in the NCAA tournament also. And so our first three games were just monsters. Uh, you beat Bacon in game four, one sixteen to forty nine. No offense to our friends at Bacon, but we're gonna keep going on. Uh, Colorado State Pueblo comes to town, coach. They had just beaten Midwestern State in Wichita Falls, and. You would lose that game in overtime uh, by three. Yeah, I thought we played very poorly that night, Casey. Uh, we you know I can't tell you how many layups we gave up, and uh, we just did not play at the level that we're capable of playing at. And uh, actually, Colorado Club has lost a couple of games since then, and they came in and they played at a high level, and we were ranked number one in the nation. And 
we have to understand when you're ranked number one in the nation you, and you come in there and you see those banners on the wall, final fours and what we're doing and number one, you're going to get everybody's A game. You're going to get their very best shot. They're excited about playing us. And uh, I didn't think we came out with our A game that night. And when you don't and you're, you're playing teams that are capable of beating you, then, then you better, you're going you're gonna to take your lumps. After that 87-84 loss to Colorado State Pueblo, each of those teams fell to 4-1 and one on the season. And then Wachita Baptist came into town, coached for a game on November 28th, a non-conference game, Wachita Baptist out of the great American Conference, and you would win that game uh, by 17. Yeah, and, and Wachita Baptist was 20-6 and six last year. They, 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 they had a great year last year. I think they actually won the GAC. I'm not sure. I think regular they season. They yeah, and then they got upset in the tournament. And so... Uh, we knew that they're, they're well coached. Uh, Washita has a good tradition basketball wise. It was another NCAA Division II game, and, uh, and we just came off that loss. I wanted to see how we reacted coming off that loss to playing another good team, and uh, they're very talented, and we came through and won the ballgame. Darlton beats Washita Baptist by 17, improves to 5 and 1. Arlington Baptist comes to town. You win that game 97 to 46. You move to 6 and 1. And then, coach, on December 5th, about two weeks ago, our Lady of the Lake comes into town. You'd win that 82 to 73, and that's a very good NAIA program. There, you know, they have some Division One transfers on that team, and, and again, you're dealing with the NAIA rules, which are, are much, much more lenient than NCAA rules. This is a team that's been wanting to play us for a long time. They won 25 games last year, and people look at their name, they think, well, can they play? This team is, you know, they're an NAI national powerhouse. And uh, I knew they would come in for, with some great talent. They've been calling and calling and wanting to play, and uh, we just, you know, we needed the game. And we knew they would be great competition, and, uh, you know, we have everything to lose. They have everything to win in a game of that caliber, but our kids came through and played well. And, uh, played a great first half. We didn't play as well in the second half. But those are things that we're trying to work on right now. But it was a good, it was a good solid win for us. So that moves you to seven and one on the season. You would then have uh, nine days off for final exams and, of course, graduation. And then last night, the University of Texas Permian Basin comes to town. Coach, they had six Division One transfers on the roster. Did it remind you a little bit of Angelo State last year? Well, they're very talented. There is no doubt. They're very talented. They have a young man from West Virginia, another one from Providence, one from Bradley, one from Kent State, and I go on and on. They're very talented. This team went down to San Antonio and beat uh, Conference USA, which is supposed to be mid-major level. They beat uh, UTSA on the road 98-85, and they came in with a five-game winning streak. So we we knew that they had Division One mid-major plus talent on their team. And, uh, we really worked hard on the preparation on it. Coach Clyde, Coach Chris, they, they put the game plan together with assistance from from uh, uh, TD and, 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 and Coleman. And, and, and I thought we were very well prepared for the game. And, and, uh, a game that we really needed to play. We need to play good people, and uh, they're going to be they're going to be reckoned with in the, in the Heartland Conference. Uh, yeah. The Heartland Conference better be ready for UTPB because they, they're very talented. They were picked to finish six in the Heartland. I don't think that's going to happen. Not, uh, I don't see that happening. No, uh, Coach. The big storyline at the start of the game, if you were there last night, is. Who is number 32 as Roman Jenkins makes his first start for you? Seven boards in 14 minutes. How much of a difference maker can he be? Well, I think he's going to be, you know, he gives us another outstanding uh, athlete on the floor. He's a, he's a rebounder. He's a shot blocker. And, and he can score inside that people don't realize yet. He has the ability to he can use both hands around the basket. Uh, he's very versatile. He's, got, he's, he's, he's very fast. Uh, you know, uh, we do some sprints in practice, and he runs the floor really, really well. And I just think that, you know, he hasn't played basketball in a year now, You're, and it's going to take him time to get back into the back in the groove. You know, he's practiced with us all fall. It's different than being in games. And, and I'm looking forward to watching him, and I'm looking forward to watching his career as he as he as we have him for the next two years. And, uh, and he brings a lot to the table for us. He's got tremendous energy. Uh, he plays very hard, and uh, you know he has a passion to play the game. And when you line him up with EJ Reed at the four and five, coach EJ leading the conference in scoring, second in the conference in rebounding, first in the conference, 16th in the nation in field goal shooting percentage. Uh, EJ's performance so far in your in your what in your mind? Well, you know I think he's come in and and, and and he's performed the way I would hope he would perform as a senior. He came in last year and he got to know the program. He, he kind of battled the program a little bit early in his career and understanding what I wanted. And, uh, and uh, he, you know, he, 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 he and I had some discussions during practices at times. And, uh, and uh, he, you know, he decided that he's going to play the way I want to play. And when he did that, then he, he, he just started to flourish. And, uh, and I think he's done that since. You know, he's come in this year as a senior, and, and he really understands our expectations. And, and he's really worked uh, within the system. And, 
and uh, I, I really feel really good. I feel really good about where his game is right now, Casey. I think he's he's, he's shooting the ball uh, at a high percentage, and, uh, and and now I just want him to continue to improve on the defensive end of the ball, on, on the floor. I mean, and I want him to continue to go to the backboards, and, 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 and people are starting to double team him. I want him to be able to distribute the ball. And, uh, and, and bring his total game together. Uh, so many things we could talk about, but we only have a 10 minute segment, but uh, we've talked about a lot of the positives with EJ. Obviously you're rebounding the ball great, plus 12. Uh, one of the negatives, Coach, your three-point shooting and your three-point percentage defense. Uh, how concerned are you about that? Well, you no, know, we know that we're not shooting the ball from the perimeter as much as we, you know, as, as well as we have in the past. I think we're at around 29, looking almost at 30 percent, which is down to 21 a couple of weeks ago. So I think we're starting to get our feel better in what we're doing. I think it's a comfort zone situation. We got to get comfortable, and and our shooters have got to get comfortable in what we're trying to do offensively. I have confidence in our kids that can shoot the ball. I, I really do. I think that we have some good shooters that just hasn't it just hasn't produced yet on, on, on the things that we're looking at. But you know, last night I think we were 33% from three, and that means we're making one out of every three. I believe my math is right, and uh, was in correct petition. And so if we can, you know, we can if we can continue to be in that 30, 33 to 38% range and, and, and work from there, uh, and if we can keep our overall statistics right at 50%. Almost at 50% from the floor as a, as a total for a team, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's the head coach of the Texans, Lon Reisman, as Tarleton State off to a 9 and 1 start. This is the Coach Lon Reisman radio show. We're going to be here until 12:30. Thanks to the Pizza Place for for providing the food. Uh, thanks to Burner Motors for sponsoring this show. We're going to take our first break. When we return in one minute, we will hear from the leading scorer in the Lone Star Conference. When the Coach Lon Reisman radio show continues right after this. And welcome back to the Coach Lon. Reisman Radio Show from the lobby of Burner Motors in Stephenville. I'm Casey Hogan. Time now for this week's Tarleton Player Spotlight. Our guest today in his second year at Tarleton after playing two seasons at Division I Long Island University, Brooklyn. He's averaging 22 points per game, which is first in the Lone Star Conference. Let's put our hands together and welcome to the show, number three, E.J. Reed. What's well, going on, E.J.? Uh, thank you. Uh, Tarleton. Yeah, are your backs back for Vegas yet? Yeah. Excuse me? Are your bags back for Vegas? Oh, not yet, yeah. not yet. You'll not probably yet. wait until Wednesday night, huh? Yeah, yes, sir. Throw it all in there. And yes, sir. How excited are you about it? This is going to be the second year in a row you've been, the third year the team's been to that South Point Holiday Hoops Classic. What's that experience like? I mean, it's a great experience. You know, we got uh, two great opponents. Um, they were going to base out there. So, uh, I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we went there last year. I mean, we came back with two wins against, you know, two uh, great opponents. Uh, same as, like, we have this year, so. Yeah, and uh, you look at those two teams, you're going to start off with Rollins. They're number 11 in the nation. Jury won the national championship two two years ago. I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about that this week as you prepare. Oh, yes, I heard a lot about Jury last year. <laughs> yeah, and, of course, you, you won that game. Tarleton State 4-0 and in that South Point Holiday Hoops Classic. How tough is it as a player to stay focused when you're in Las Vegas with the glitz and glamour? I mean, it's, it's really not, um, not that hard of me because – I mean, coaches, they uh, keep us focused, keep us focused on the game that we have in here. You know, making sure we don't get distracted with other things that's around uh, keeping us uh, away from all the outside uh, adversity, as I should say. Yeah, Coach Reisman told me last night it's not a vacation for you guys. It's yes. a business trip. Yeah, exactly. It's a business trip. Visiting with senior forward E.J. Reed who last night uh, against UTBP had 17 points, and you won that game by 16 was that the most complete performance offensively and defensively? So uh, I feel like I feel like it is. I feel like we. Um, I mean, because UTPP they um, average over a hundred points a game. Yeah. For us to hold them to uh, under sixty points as we uh, want to do every game. I mean, I feel like that was good for us. Uh, and another thing, I feel like it was good that we can come out the second half and um, continue to uh, to like have pride in our defense. I feel like we have more pride in our defense now. We work harder on our defense. Uh, so I, I, feel, I feel good about it now. It's just like consistency. We can do it like for a couple of games in a row for the rest of the year. So Roe, we call him Roe, but it's Romon Jenkins comes in and plays his first game as a Texan last night. How comfortable are the guys with Roe? Because he's been practicing with you. Yeah, we, uh, I feel good with, uh, with Roe on the court. You know, Roe, he's a big presence down there. Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's versatile. He's good on defensive end. He'll block shots. Uh, he's a presence down there. He can score either hand. In the post, I mean, it just feels good. It feels good with the better. How tough is it as a player? Have you ever been in that situation where you got thrown into the mix uh, in the middle of the season? No, but I can just imagine how it is. You know, first game back, you just uh, starting how he has the butterflies in his uh, stomach, and then again, he's really excited. So, 
I'm visiting with junior forward E.J. Reed, a 2012 graduate of Mesquite High School, leads the conference in scoring and field goal percentage shooting. You're not the leading rebounder anymore. Uh, Capri Austin at Midwestern State uh, jumped you last night. As a player, do you ever get caught up looking at stats? Uh, no, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the record right now. <laughs> and that's the uh, obviously the right mentality is this team now uh, has eight wins and one loss and you've got some new faces that you kind of mixed in you lose guys like Damian Clemens and, and Davin A. Carter who if they were here right now they would say that the team isn't very good without them okay. have, you ever, have you ever met two guys so full of themselves as, <laughs> as Clemens and Carter <laughs> I had them on the radio this year it's literally they could have their own show for an hour and, and they wouldn't even let me talk but you got some new faces in let's talk about three of those guys and we'll start with Chance Chambers what does Chance bring to the table? Man, Chance, he's a great spark. You know, he's, um, you know, he's small, but he's athletic. You know, um, I, I, I like, I like, I, um, I like his quickness. You know, and um, his spark, his spark that he gives, gives us off the bench. You know, he can come out, he can hit shots. Um, sometimes I don't know. I think it was a couple of games ago. You know, nobody was hitting shots. Chance came in. And, um, he hit a big shot to get off and going. He hit a three pointer from Fort Worth last night. You remember oh, that yeah, one? Yeah, that yeah. was almost half court. I don't think the coaches were very happy with that. At yeah, first, I, I, heard, went I heard Coach Reisman on the side. I was like, no, don't shoot it. Don't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number twenty-two, Xavier Smith. Oh man, Xavier, uh, he's he's crafty. He's so skilled. Like it, it's it's really it's, it's scary. You know, he can uh, shoot the ball. He can score his back to the basket. He can face up and drive past you. And uh, the best thing, his, the best thing to be uh, about Xavier is on the defensive end. Like he can he can block shots. He can. I feel like in the game he can jump to touch the uh, top of the backboard when he goes to block a shot. Yeah, and he's actually in the top five in the conference in block shots per game. And uh, the final newcomer we'll talk about has been thrown into the mix, the Division One transfer out of TCU, Charles Hill. Yeah, see him. Man, he, he can just score. I feel like he can score from um, any level. He can score above the rim when he wants to. Um, I mean, it, it is a complete player. I just feel like, uh, I mean, he, he can... I don't know. And, and you've been in his shoes because he, he came over as a Division One transfer. You did that last year. You, and I know there's been probably some games where Charles getting worked in the mix probably wasn't pleased with his performance. Have you had to kind of work with him, talk with him about making that transition? Yeah, I had a couple talks with him um, at the games or in practices. You know, sometimes I tell him to slow down, just let the offense come to him because I've been through the same situation. Like, yeah. my first couple games, you know, I thought I was like, I'm coming from D1 to D2. It should be easy. Then I had a big surprise. It was a big surprise. Same for him. I remember you telling me last year that the competition you thought was tougher in the Lone Star than the North. I think it's the Northeast Conference. Mm -hmm. that, the NEC. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel like it's, it's tougher and it's more competitive. All right, let's let's stop talking about basketball. Christmas is almost here. Uh, what's Christmas like for EJ Reed when you go home and ski? A lot of food. A lot of eating. <laughs> yeah, we would talk about the Cowboys, but the season's been so bad. It's, it, it, it's all right. How depressing was that game? Did you watch on Sunday? I, I, I didn't watch the whole game. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go on to the next question. Uh, family, very important to you. You look up in the stands, your family's here a lot. You got a little nephew. Yeah, talk Aiden. about your nephew. Aiden, man. He's Aiden? Just, Aiden. Yeah, Aiden yeah. Coleman. Yeah, he's just growing before my eyes, man. Just, every time I go back, it's like he, know, he knows something new or he's just getting bigger. And all he wants to do is play basketball, so Coach Reese probably got <laughs> Get him signed. Go Get him signed early, little Aiden. Uh, last question as we're running out of time. How much pressure is there playing at Tarleton? I mean, the bar set so high after last year. Do you feel a lot of pressure? I mean, um, yeah, you feel pressure, but then again, you got to uh, trust what the coaches teach you that week or uh, the whole preseason practice. You know, they prepare us, um, I think, more than enough for uh, any opponent that we will face. So. EJ, it's always good to see you. Merry Christmas to you, and uh, I guess I'll see you in Las Vegas at the South Point on Thursday. Yes, sir. Thank you. That is senior forward EJ Reed. Give him a round of applause for appearing on the show today when you're returning one minute. Coach and I will preview the matchups with Rollins and Jury and go around the Lone Star Conference when the Coach Lon Reisman radio show continues right after this. Coach, before we preview the games against Rollins and Drury, let's take a quick look around the Lone Star Conference. Uh, Angelo State, Coach, off to a 10-0 start. They're actually sixth in the nation. Uh, not a bad uh, inaugural season for St. Cobo. No, I mean, they're, they're very talented. We saw them in our classic open season up with KC. They're going to be a very, very tough team. And, and, and then it's just a, the way the Lone Star Conference is. I thought last year it was as good as I had ever seen since I've been in this conference for uh, many, many years. And it looks like it's going to match up and, and be the same way this year because I think we even have stronger teams coming in. You know, West Texas is off to an 8-3 start. Yeah. Kingsville's off to a 7-2 or 6-2 start. 7-2. 7-2 start. 
but I mean it's just commerce it, is seven and two. It's just commerce is, it was good last year. They're right back to it again, and so I, I you know I, I mean uh, I know that uh, Eastern Mexico went into St. Mary's beat St. Mary's in double figures at St. Mary's, which is unheard of. And Cameron beat Drury at Drury. I'll tell you what, it gets to be pretty tough here. And we always talk about how tough it is, but I don't think it's ever been top to bottom. I mean, look at Kingsville. They're now 7-2 and two no, with no, what Johnny and Stealth No, it's, it's, it's going to be an absolute war here in, the, in, in January. So you, know, you better be ready to play every night because it's, it's, this is top to bottom. It's as good as I've ever seen. And I can tell you right now, there's not another conference in the nation that has three of the top 12 teams in the nation right now. No, and that's how good this conference is right now. So, you know, you're, you know we talk about Division One basketball. This is a Division One conference. There's no doubt about it. There's some of the really high level players in this league and it's going to be a, it's going to be a, 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 just a knock down drag out war for the next two months. Tarleton State number eight in the nation, Angelo State is number six and Midwestern State is number 12 in the official National Association of Basketball Coaches top 25 poll. Let's talk a little bit about the South Point Holiday Hoops Classic. Uh, later in the broadcast we'll talk about game times and tickets and all that kind of stuff but let's look at these opponents coach you're going to start. Uh, with a Friday game at 1.15 Vegas time against Rollins. They're now 9-1. and one. They started 9-0, and oh, number 11 in the nation, and they've got a, quite a tradition there. Yeah, we played Rollins once in the past in Vegas, and uh, they, they, you know, that they have a for, tremendous basketball program. They, uh, they do some things that you don't see all the time. They run a lot of zone, and they do some matchup zone. As they, they're, you know, and, and so they, they, they've been a very formidable opponent in Division Two for a long, long time. They're very competitive, and they're off to a great start. Nine and one, and uh, I think they've been ranked, uh, like you said, as high as eleventh in the nation. And that's what we expect when we go to Vegas. We expect sure. to play these type of teams in Vegas. That's why we go. We want to go see, and it gives us an opportunity to see programs at a different part of the country. So if you are fortunate enough at times to get in the NCAA tournament and you're able to get to the elite, you, you've got a chance to see these people and, and from the different regions of the country. And it also gives your team exposure to different teams in the, in the nation. So that's one of the reasons that we go to Vegas every year. And, uh, and we know we have to fill a schedule out. We know we need to play people you know, that, that, are, that, are, that are, have outstanding programs because we want to get our, our team better. Uh, Rollins out of the Southern States Conference, uh, they were picked to finish ninth in their conference and they're now 11th in the nation. Yeah. That tells you all you need to know about preseason poll. And I think Florida Southern in that conference was picked to finish first and they struggled a little bit out of the game. You know, that's what we've always talked about, preseason polls. You know, guys, it's, they're great to recruit with after that. They're, they're, they're not as, you know, yeah. You, you, you like the prestige and you like the visibility and the exposure that it gives you, but you have to understand that that's it, that it's only preseason. So that game against Rollins Friday, 1:15 Vegas time, opening game of the South Point Holiday Hoops Classic, and then you will take on the Drury Panthers on Saturday, another 1:15 Pacific Standard Time start, Coach. And you look at this team. Yes, it's changed a little bit. You defeated this team last year, but they still have Cameron Bundy, who's kind of leading the way. There was two Camerons last year. Bundy averaging 20 points per game. Yeah, he's a very good player, and I remember him last year. <laughs> he's kind of the heart and soul of that team. I mean, yeah. he's, he runs the show, and. Uh, and they're very well coached. Uh, coach does a great job at Drury, and, and uh, just two weeks ago they were a number five team in the nation. And so we know we have our hands full with Drury. They're, they're, a couple of years ago, as you said, they won the national championship. Yeah, in 2013, <laughs> and you talked about it earlier, Drury faced Cameron University on November 27th. They would lose that game by two. They fell to NAIA Union in the next game, and then they fell to Missouri S&T in their last game, 74-56, but they are 5-3 and three on the season, Coach. And uh, one thing they're going to do is they're going to play fundamentally sound basketball. Yeah, they, they, if you look at it, Casey, they, they, they do a great job of running their offense. They're very, you know, they, they work within the system and the philosophy that he installs there. Here's a team that beat Bellamere last year to get to the NCAA tournament. They, you know, they, they, yeah. they were in the NCAA tournament again last year and beat Bellamere in the championship game to get to the NCAA tournament. So. Uh, you know, they are a team that has uh, had a that has a good tradition and a team that that will be fighting for an NCAA berth again this year. And they started a little slow last year for their standards, and you're right, because they really turned it on at the end to make the NCAA tournament. So South Point Holiday Hoops Classic, coach your team four and zero all time at that classic, and it's not a vacation. It may be for the broadcaster, but not for the team and coach, right? It definitely is not a vacation for us. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, it's it's stressful to go out there. And, and uh, we know that we have our work cut out in front of us, and uh, we want to make sure that we're totally focused and we're doing, we're out there to play basketball, and that's what we're going out there to, you know, to, to, to do and play great competition. I want to thank everyone that brought uh, toys for kids today. The part of a partnership between Tarleton Athletic and the Optimist Club. You go back to that game 
uh, about a week and a half ago against Our Lady of the Lake. Santa Claus was in the house and everyone brought unwrapped new toys to put under the tree and we're doing that again today. So thanks to everyone that brought toys today, toys for kids. We appreciate that. And make sure if you haven't put your toy under the tree that you go ahead and do that. Tarleton fans, it's not too late to book your trip to the South Point Holiday Hoops Classic. It starts on Friday and ends on Saturday. The South Point Hotel and Casino, there's still great flight and hotel prizes available. To book the ultimate fan package, call Shelly with All Seasons Travel at 1-800-552-5484. That's Shelly at All Seasons Travel, 1-800-552-5484. If you're making the trip to Vegas, there's going to be a reception Thursday, December 17th at 6 o'clock Vegas time in the Sonoma A room of the South Point Hotel and Casino. You don't have to even tell us you're coming. We'd like for you to uh, tell me, Hogan at Tarleton.edu. Shoot me an email and let me know you're coming. But it's open to fans, parents, uh, supporters. There's going to be some free finger foods, a cash bar from 6 to 7 on Thursday night in Vegas. Coach, it's always good to, uh, when people make that kind of investment in your program to bring it together. Yeah, I think you have a pretty good turnout, don't you? I think we've got about 150 people. 150 no. people. Wow. wow. And I remember a couple years ago, Princeton was there, if you remember. Right. And I think we had a bigger crowd than Princeton. Right. That says a lot. It just tells you how people travel, and uh, we really appreciate their support. The Tarleton Texans are off to a 5-3 and three start to the season. They defeat Oklahoma Baptist last night uh, by five points. Morgan Ashmore with a career-high 19 points. And, Coach, uh, Misty Wilson's team is going to make their first ever trip to Vegas. Yeah, I think it's great. They're going to get some national exposure. They're going to play two great teams out there, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, playing a doubleheader with them because we play back-to-back -back games out there with them. Coach Wilson's squad will face Stonehill, uh, a team that I don't like very much. Uh, and, and I told everyone about that last night when we played Stonehill yeah, on yeah, the day when they brought the whole school with them. Yes, they did. They averaged 200 fans a game that year. I think so, they brought about 3,000 people yeah. into that game. Uh, but it's, I think, will be the first ever meeting on the women's side between Tarleton and Stonehill. It's at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time on Friday. Remember, Vegas is two hours earlier, so that's a 5.30 start Texas time on Friday. And the Texans are going to play at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time on Friday and Saturday. They'll take on Montana State Billings on Saturday. You can catch the action on the Tarleton Sports Network. National Farm Life pregame show starting at 5.25 Texas time on both Friday and Saturday. For ticket and game information, go to tarletonsports.com. And then Coach Reisman's Texans will face Rollins at 1.15 Vegas time on Friday. They're going to take on Drury, 1.15 Vegas time on Saturday. It's very simple. If you're staying in Texas, the pregame shows are going to start at 3 o'clock with the National Farm Live pregame show. Coach Chris pregame interview, starting lineups, and more. And guess who's going to be my color commentator on Saturday? I'd like to know. Mark Smith. Mark Smith. Be on the radio. Wow, Mark Smith. He's going to come over from San Francisco. Yes, he's a Hall of Famer at Tarleton State University. He was on my first team. He's a lawyer in San Francisco, and he's done a... You know, he's, uh, he's, he's one of the reasons that our program is where it is today because he was, again, just a, an outstanding player. And I'm going to ask him uh, to give me some old Coach Reisman stories because I think you were probably in your upper 20s when Mark played for you, weren't well, you? Well, I was, I was actually 30, 32. Oh, excuse me, forgive me. So I'm going to get some uh, – make sure you tune in on Saturday because I'm going to get Mark Smith to kind of tell us some old school Coach Reisman stories. I don't know if you can put him on the radio or not. Probably not, man. <laughs> and and Mark's, uh, Mark's a lawyer, so he knows what he's doing. But he, knows we'll do what, our he knows what he can say. Yeah, he sure does. Uh, congratulations to Haley Roberts coach yesterday or earlier last week she was among 14 players named first team all americans by the american volleyball coaches association quite an honor i think haley and mary both are headed to nebraska today to accept some uh, big awards for our volleyball program mary is a coach and haley is a as a student athlete so i uh, can't say enough about uh, the program that mary's built what a tremendous year that our volleyball program had 27 wins and a conference championship and uh, NCAA tournament berth, uh, just, a, just done a great job. Again, this is a special edition of the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show. Our first regularly scheduled show will be on Friday, January 8th at noon right here at Bruner Motors. And then we're going to have the Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show starting on Thursday, January 7th at noon from the lobby of First Financial Bank in Stephenville. Kelton Weens will be the host at that show. So very simple. Coaches shows every Thursday and Friday at noon starting on January 7th. You can listen to the shows right here on the flagship station of the Tarleton Sports Network, 90.5 FM KTRL in Stephenville, Granbury, and Fort Worth. Make sure you download the new mobile sports app by searching Tarleton Sports in the iTunes or Google Play Store for Android. And remember to text the word Texans to 95577 to stay up to date on upcoming Tarleton athletic events. I want to thank the Pizza Place in Stephenville for providing the lunch. Thanks to senior forward E.J. Reed, our special guest. Thanks to our producer Aaron Young back in the studio. 
Happy late birthday to Jody Lee. Jody Lee Cobble's birthday yesterday, our engineers, so happy birthday, Jody Lee. Thanks to the Burner Auto family for sponsoring the show, and last but not least, thanks to each and every one of you for listening and for your support of Tarleton State University Athletics. Coach, final question I've got to ask you. I know you're not going to want to answer it. You've got 597 career wins. There's five games until our next show. You need to win three out of five to hit 600. Uh, when that happens, what will it mean to you? Well, Casey, I mean, it means that I've, I've survived for a long time. I knew he would say that. <laughs> I've had a lot of good players, and I've had a great amount of great assistant coaches. And I, you know, anytime you you have something like that happen in your career, you're you you it's 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 a you know you just have to give credit to the players and the assistant coaches that have been with me because I've I've done this alone, and, and our fans have been a big has been a big contributors to games at home and that we won, and so. You know, it's a it's an accomplishment for our whole program, not just our first. Thing. And hopefully, Mr. Bruner, when we come back, we'll be able to celebrate uh, Coach Reisman's 600th career win. Coach, as always, thanks for your time. Merry Christmas. We'll see you in Vegas. Okay, Casey. Merry Christmas to everyone. That's going to do it for this first edition of the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show. Remember, the show continues on Friday, January 8th at noon for the 28th year head coach of the Texans. I'm Casey Hogan saying so long for Bruner Motors in Stephenville. Until next time. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll talk to you on Friday at 3 o'clock.